Hello there, I'm Gary. Welcome to my channel and welcome back if you've been here before. So today I'm building this kit, the Hawker Hurricane Mark 1 in 148th scale from Airfix. Now, if you're thinking you're a Hurricane, you're an Airfix, frankly, get over it and have a go because this is a very, very lovely kit to build. I'll show you all about building it today. If you are thinking of buying one and just want to know what it comes with, then there's a companion box opening video. If you want to sit down with a nice drink of something or other, and maybe some snacks, and take in some historical material as well, then the special bonus edition will be available tomorrow. If you have already got one of these, you've got it in your stash sitting around or one's on order and on the way and you want to know how I put my one together, then this is the video for you. Now, if you like the video, please, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. The link to that is down in the bottom right hand corner there. I'll click on the logo and you can subscribe. If you want to support future productions, you can do that through Patreon and buy me a coffee and also by going direct to the FX Online store through a link below. All of that is in the information box. Okay, let's get on with it and make this rather lovely Hawker Hurricane Mark I. As usual, I'm starting by spraying a few parts. Some bits get the interior green. I use a Vallejo IDF green for this. And most of the interior parts get a coat of aluminium. Starting with the seat, this has a back and two side pieces that glue on. I couldn't find any register for this, so I've just put them how they seem right, looking at the instructions. Then the seat can go onto the rear bulkhead of the cockpit. This foot channel is a bit spindly, so I've cut it from the sprue completely, then trimmed it. It saves breaking any of the more delicate bits. When that's done, it can sit into the floor. Now to start assembling the cockpit itself, there is a side frame here that sits on the two large spar sections. Then the floor panel can go in between the beams. The side panel here helps to keep the beams upright. Then there is this rear cross member. Then this front cross member. These are going to provide the structural strength. Next, the joystick linkage can go into place. I'll put the top on later on. Then the rudder pedals go in. And finally, the other side panel to hold it all in place. Take your time to make sure all the contact points are made correctly. Otherwise, it will make life difficult later. Finally, for the cockpit, the rear bulkhead and seat can slot into place in the structure. I'll give it all a detail wash as well now. I think it looks really amazing. Now when all that is dry, I'm going to add this gas bottle and this pipe underneath the cockpit floor. This doubles as the roof of the undercarriage bay. And then I'm going to add that top of the joystick. Next I'm building the undercarriage bay into the lower wing. First there's this rear panel, then these two side panels. Then the whole of the cockpit piece can go into place as well with the spars. This will need a bit of finessing into place and some clamps or tape to hold it all together while it dries. And while I'm waiting, I'm going to cut the access panels for the guns out of the upper sections of the wing. If you're not going to do the exposed guns, don't bother with this. If you are, just take your time, repeated cuts along the panel lines without putting too much pressure on the blade. Eventually, the panels will come out. There are replacements on the sprue, so you don't have to save these bits of plastic. Just sand the hole to the correct size and shape. The guns themselves sit in the lower wings. There are four on each side. Make sure to follow the part numbers very carefully here. When they're all set, I'm adding the magazines and feed lines. One magazine on each side of the four guns. Then I can add these structural cross members and the end panels of the gun bays as well. 
when both sides are done they do look quite incredible quick touch up of paint here the paint colors reflect the camouflage on the wing above and the upper wing sections can then go on they go on very simply as usual tape and clamp while it's all setting I'm going to do the instrument panel now first of all I've painted it black and then I'm adding the decal that's supplied use a good amount of decal setting fluid such as microset or decal fix when it is dry paint with matte varnish then later on just a few drops of gloss over the instruments to make them look like glass so the fuselage itself now and the cockpit walls have been painted green at the top and aluminium below and a few bits and pieces picked out in black the front bulkhead or the engine firewall goes in first then the instrument panel then the two halves of the fuselage go together simple as that I tape them up and secure with ultra thin glue but you know do it how you want it when they're set the wings can be joined to the bottom of the fuselage now it's a tight old fit because of this structure if you got it wrong it will be nigh on impossible to fit the wings on properly but they do go on i used elastic bands and tape to secure them all whilst the glue set and while that's drying i can fit the bottom panel for the engine this would be where the filtered inlet would be on the tropical version and the rear fuselage base can go on the one that has the arrestor hook in the sea hurricane this is the plain one the ailerons come as single pieces and they slot simply into the ends of the wings each tailplane side comes in two halves just glue them together while there's a setting I'll stick the halves of the tires together too saves a bit of time later when the tailplanes are dry they can go on either side of the fin at the back then the one piece elevator goes in followed by this retaining post then the rudder itself can slot into place all very neat the next job is the radiator the grills go in front and back painted already in dark aluminium this assembly then sits on the bottom of the fuselage and at the front we attach the inlet body an exhaust flap is put in place on the back and there are two small actuators that go into place next I'm going to paint the bottom of the gun sight in black it can then go into place at the front of the cockpit then a quick bit of paint at the top of the cockpit in the camouflage color because even a closed canopy covers some of the skin here then I've added a canopy sadly my camera's lost that bit but it's really straightforward now I've blocked off all the open panels and primed the kit so I can start on the paint job sky type s for the underside then I can mask off the bottom and do the top in dark earth I'll spray the propeller at this point as well I use an undercoat of aluminium and a top coat of black it gives a really nice finish and when that top dark earth has dried completely I'll mask out the camouflage pattern I use frog tape for this you can use any low tack decorating tape you can buy pre-cut masks if you like I draw the rough lines onto the tape then cut out with a craft knife you don't have to get every patch right first time do the edges first then fill in the rest and when it's all done I can spray what's left with dark green And while I'm in the mood for spraying, I'll spray the prop spinner white, as I'll be doing it red later. The red really doesn't cover the primer very well. With all the main paint done, I'll coat it all with a bit of gloss varnish, then start on the decals. Plenty of decal setting solution. These cartograph decals are a delight to use. Now this scheme has slightly brighter red centers to the roundels, 
and these are supplied separately but they go on very easily and it's not too difficult to get them in the right place. You can see here how sharp the stencil details are as well. There are decals for the nose band but I decided to paint them so I can get the same colour on the band and on the spinner. First a white or very pale grey coat, then the red itself. It may take a couple of coats of red to get the depth of colour right. I can also spray the spinner now. I've masked off the prop to do the tips, white first, then yellow. I found it pops out a lot more like this. Back to assembly and here is the carburetor air inlet. The sprue branch sits right between the locating pins so it's really difficult to clean them up properly. Not the best bit of design there. Anyway, it goes into place in front of the wheel well. Next is the landing gear and the main leg goes in with a rear support. Now these make a really sturdy base. There's also this tiny actuator that goes through the rib here very fiddly. Then I can slot the tail wheel into place. It sits quite firmly. Then make the wheels. There is a hub that fits into the tyre and the wheel itself fits onto the leg. Now these have slots that line up the weighted flat spot of the wheel. Make sure it's on the tail side of the leg or you've got it on the wrong side. Now I'll add a bit of aluminium to this lamp housing also to the back of these wing lamps as reflectors. This small lamp cover fits in easily. A tiny dab of canopy glue will hold it. Now to put the propeller together, the propeller shaft sits inside this cup. The end is capped off with this piece. This will allow the shaft to rotate freely. The propeller itself sits on this back plate. There is a square slot for alignment. Then the spinner sits on the back plate and the propeller shaft sits inside the back plate from the back. Now while that's drying I'm going to fit the undercarriage doors. These just fit onto the side of the gear legs. Then there's this small stirrup for the pilot to get in and out and the pitot tube goes in under the port wing. Now those lights I painted a moment ago go into the front of the wings. I use some blue tack on a cocktail stick to help me place them. I also remember to peel off the cockpit masks I didn't show you making earlier. Now the propeller's dry, it can go into the nose. Only glow the rear part of it if you want the prop to actually turn. I'm not bothered about it. I also put the exhausts in now. These I've pre-painted in a burnt iron colour. Then the radio mast can go onto the back of the fuselage and the covers for the wing lights can be added. Use a bit of crystal clear or contact clear to keep them from fogging. Almost there in the wing navigation lights. Now these have small dimples moulded into the back of the plastic and you can fill this with a bit of transparent paint, red for port and green for starboard. This makes it look like there are green and red bulbs in a transparent cover, which is much more realistic than just painting the whole thing transparent red or green. Really good piece of design from Airfix. These then go into the wingtips and do double check they're the right way round. Finally, use your imagination to artistically drape the gun bay panels on the wings. And with that, your hurricane is complete. I cannot speak highly enough of this kit. It's a very, very good way to start exploring 148 scale. Plenty of chance for detailing and the fit and finish is superb. No doubt there's loads of aftermarket stuff as well. If anyone is watching from Airfix, please, more of the same. The only thing I'd add is an option for a seat with seat belts on it in case you don't want to use the pilot figure. Otherwise, I'd be more than happy to build another one of these in fact, I probably will and make a sea hurricane out of it. What a lovely kit. Now, if you've enjoyed the video, please do remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. The link to do that is in the bottom right hand corner down there on the logo. 
do keep coming back for other videos including the bonus video of the hurricane which releases tomorrow and that includes bonus historical material keep coming back to have a look at other videos and projects as we make them thank you so much for watching and i will see you next time